Do you need an all-purpose tactical light, but you're short on cash? Well, check out the Olight Warrior X Pro coming up. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and today we are going to talk about the Olight Warrior X Pro uh, Tactical Flashlight. Now, Olight, uh, they call it a tactical thrower, and they advertise 600 meters of throw on it. 600 meters, I think, is overstating things a little bit, uh, but this guy does put out uh, 2,250 lumens of light. Uh, that is what they quote, and uh, using it over the last couple of weeks, uh, I've noticed that uh, it does put out a considerable amount of light, and it does have a uh, really nice hot spot, and it throws a pretty good distance. So, First thing, the Warrior X Pro is kind of the second generation of the Warrior X flashlight. Uh, and this is uh, fairly recent, uh, but I've had the older Warrior X uh, for quite some time. Now, this was a uh, limited edition uh, desert tan color, uh, which works really good, looks really great with uh, coyote or uh, desert dirt color. Uh, weapons, and I have it set up in the weapon light configuration here. Um, this has got a lot of abuse uh, set up in this, but there were a few things that I really didn't like about it. Uh, one of those being uh, the kind of goofy uh, blue shiny ring. Uh, now, Olight is a Chinese company, and I think some of that creeps into some of their design considerations, uh, and I think that's where the, uh, the blue ring crept in. I talked to Olight designers uh, a couple of years back at one of the NRA shows, and they were talking about uh, they thought it dressed it up and made it look kind of classy. Uh, and I explained to them that on the tactical side of things, uh, it doesn't look classy. It really makes it look kind of cheap. So uh, one of the really neat things is they have changed that uh, with the Warrior X Pro. Uh, you notice the bezel up here is now matte black. Now, unfortunately, they still have these really sharp uh, crenellations on the bezel. Uh, that is something I'm not a fan of from a law enforcement aspect. Uh, when you're using this as a tactical light in conjunction with a weapon, uh, there may be occasions where you are not justified in firing a weapon, uh, but you still need to create that reactionary gap, create distance, etc. And a good sharp smack with the bezel on a flashlight uh, can definitely send the message that you want them to get back. The drawback of it is when you have crenellations like this, uh, that sharp smack, uh, if it hits any kind of bony area of the body, it will generally lacerate the skin, and uh, now you will have a bleeding problem. And blood is bad uh, when it gets on you and you don't know what is in it. Uh, so I really wish they would go to a smooth bezel. Additionally, uh, the practical side of things uh, is crenellations uh, like this tend to be very difficult on gear. Now... The crenellations and the bezel aside, uh, the Olight Warrior X and the Warrior X Pro have proven to be a very useful illumination tool. Uh, now, the Warrior X Pro uh, does come with two stages of illumination, so when you're using it in handheld mode, uh, you have a activation button on the back, and if you push it partially in, uh, then you get momentary low power. Uh, if you push it all the way in, uh, then you get momentary high power. So you get that full 2,250 lumens. Uh, if you tap halfway and release, you get constant on low power. If you tap all the way and release, then you get constant full power. Um, and you can access those either way. So I can, I can tap halfway and release to get uh, the low power setting. I can turn it off, I can tap all the way and release, and get the full power setting. I don't have to cycle through different modes. Um, there, there's no extra garbage to get in the way. Uh, some of the lights in the past have had 6 million different modes in them. Um, it, they've had side toggle buttons and all kinds of this. In, in a tactical flashlight, that stuff can be very problematic. Uh, when you're wearing gloves, sometimes you don't notice that you are pressing side buttons or mode buttons. And uh, in stressful situations, you tend to tighten down uh, a whole lot more than you're really cognizant of. Uh, so getting into modes you don't want to be in can be a problem. 
Additionally, uh, when you are looking at something close up, uh, especially paperwork, things like that, you don't want that 2,250 lumens. Uh, it's painful even when your eyes adapt to bright light. Uh, so being able to quickly get into that low power mode, uh, do what you need to do and then off or go from low power mode to all of a sudden, oops, what's that out there and hit that full high power mode, uh, that is beneficial. Now the switching, uh, they got the modes right on the switching, uh, but one thing that I still dislike on the switching is there are three little nubs up here uh, that protect the button. Um, this is a pro and a con. Uh, so the nubs protect the button uh, so you don't accidentally hit the button. You actually have to make an intentional press uh, to get the light to turn on. So it's less likely to turn on your pocket if you have it in a holster, etc. Uh, it's less likely uh, to come on, turn on, and then uh, burn up your battery life or actually burn you because the head does get hot on this thing. But um, it makes it difficult to use in some modes. So if you like to hold the light in a modified syringe type mode and hold your handgun here, you can't really squeeze to get the light on like you can uh, with uh, some of the other defensive light models. You really do have to actually push on the light. So I can still do a syringe type grip, but I have to push on it with the uh, inside knuckle of my thumb. Uh, not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so you can turn the guy on and tail stand it and get illumination. Uh, if you're working in places without power that have white ceilings, that is very useful and the ability to do it on low power or high power, uh, whatever you need for the illumination task at hand is nice. So uh, those work for that, but again, it's, uh, it's trade-offs. Um, now, the Olight comes set up with a couple of different options uh, for carry and for use. Uh, right out of the box, it comes set up like we have here. Uh, it has a pocket clip on it, and it has uh, this kind of clover-shaped uh, four-way ring on the back uh, that, again, allows you to get those syringe grips. Uh, it allows something for your fingers to lock onto um, if you grip it around the bezel like you normally would uh, for an FBI type shooting position. Uh, but they also include a rubberized uh, round ring, uh, which you just simply unscrew the battery cap, pop this guy off, pop the pocket clip off, and slide the round ring on. Uh, and then you have a much better equipped uh, light to be able to use in those uh, two-handed firing positions. Uh, so the, the ring is really my preference for most setups, uh, unless you are actually going to use the pocket clip. If you use the pocket clip, you have to have uh, the aluminum uh, four-way ring on here. So let's talk about a couple of the accessories that you get in the box with it. I said you get the ring, uh, you get a lanyard, and you get the magnetic charging cable. Now this is really one of the things that I think is real cool about the Olight uh, tactical lights uh, is that you get a USB charger right out of the box. Uh, so a lot of us um, have USB power banks that we carry with us. Uh, a lot of modern vehicles have a USB port in the vehicle. And so the ability to plug this thing in and then just quickly and easily snap it on the back of the light uh, that is really great. That means that, uh, again, if you work in a law enforcement capacity, uh, you can have this thing in a cup holder, uh, charging, ready to go, and it's very easy just to kick that magnetic base off and grab it and go uh, when you need it. So uh, you happen to uh, miscalculate or you have a long night where you're burning the battery quite a bit, uh, it's really easy every time you get in the car to snap that on and charge it. Uh, now, Olight does advertise eight hours of runtime on this. I think they overstated that uh, quite a bit, uh, or they are uh, really just stating the low power runtime. Um, we did not get anywhere near eight hours of runtime on high. Uh, so two little drawbacks with this guy uh, is if you click it on high power 
and set it down, it will stay on high power until the battery is exhausted. There is no automatic shutoff on it. Uh, now, we got about an hour and a half of runtime uh, with it on high power from a freshly charged cell. Now, we did cycle the cell a couple of times, so we did burn it down before we did the, uh, the uh, full power test, uh, but it was fully charged before we started off. Uh, so, and there again, you don't get that full 2,250 lumens for the entire time. Uh, it does step down. Uh, as it burns through its battery. Uh, but I found the, uh, the runtime is perfectly sufficient uh, for most uh, urban tasks uh, where you're going to be able to go back and you're going to be able to power it up every night. Uh, generally, uh, with the original Pro, uh, I would get a full week's worth of use out of it with no problem uh, before I would have to put it on a charger, before I would notice that uh, I'm not getting that full runtime. Uh, really, most of the time for admin tasks, you're going to be using it in that low power mode. Uh, the only time I would really kick it on high power is searching for shell casings, uh, tactical tasks, uh, spotting, uh, control, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's when you kick it on that full power. One other accessory that does come with uh, the Warrior X Pro is this uh, holster. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of the holster that came with the Warrior X. They definitely upgraded it with the Pro. Uh, now, one thing I don't like about it is it has this uh, rather raw hole in the bottom. Uh, there wasn't a finishing on it. It looks like it's just a thermal cut hole in the bottom, uh, but it does serve a purpose. So uh, when you put the light in the holster and uh, you jam it in here, bezel down, uh, if for some reason you have uh, clicked the light on, uh, you can see that the light is on while it's in the holster. And that gives you the opportunity to shut it off uh, before it melts the bottom out of the holster. Uh, so that is there for a definite purpose. Uh, it's also nice because uh, it allows uh, shell casings or water or debris or anything else to fall out of the bottom uh, instead of causing problems uh, when you go to put the light back in there. Uh, it does have a magnetic snap. Olight is uh, kind of gonzo for magnets. They put magnets in all kinds of stuff, uh, but it it's kind of cool. Uh, you don't have to really fish around and then uh, try to grind that snap against the light to get it to close. And the pouch does have some structure to it. It's not the, uh, the cheap off-brand nylon pouches that you generally get uh, free with flashlights. It does have a uh, nice snap and Velcro down here as well as just a standard belt loop. Uh, so you could put this on a duty belt just fine and there is even a tab here uh, so that you can dummy cord it either to the belt or dummy cord the light to it, uh, whatever you want. But uh, this would look just fine on a nylon duty belt. It wouldn't look out of place. It wouldn't look cheap. So really nice that they included that uh, free of charge. You do get a little uh, lanyard. Uh, I really wouldn't use this for anything. Uh, this is going to get uh, junked pretty quick. Uh, but I could see that if you were working in a maritime environment, uh, then being able to lanyard this thing on your wrist uh, when you're using it is nice because uh, in maritime environments, you drop stuff overboard. It just happens. So really kind of cool overall for the included accessories. Uh, you get quite a bit of extra value in the box. Now I'm going to talk about some accessories that are not included that you can get and use with the Warrior Pro at, or Warrior X Pro. Um, one of those is the uh, Picatinny mount here. Uh, so I already have it installed on the uh, Warrior X here, and I usually will use the rubber ring when I install this mount because you have to take the, uh, the belt clip off anyway or the pocket clip off anyway. So what I like to do uh, with this guy is you have to take the tail cap off, take the uh, four-way ring off, take the pocket clip off, and then the clamp or the uh, mount is kind of spring-loaded. Uh, so you just back this little knob off all the way, pull it back, and then it's very easy to slide onto the body of the light. 
uh, and it's ambidextrous. You can mount the light on the left or the right, whichever direction you want. Uh, so you have quite a few options as to which way you clock the light on a rail, uh, either if you were using the top rail or if you have a four-sided uh, Picatinny rail. You really have some good options on where to put it. Uh, it is aluminum on the ring and it is plastic uh, on the actual Picatinny mount. Uh, but again, I've had this mounted for a while and I haven't run into any issues with it. Uh, it's gotten abused, knocked around in the car, banged into things, and I haven't broken a mount yet. I'm sure you could if you tried, but um, it's, uh, it's fairly robust polymer. Uh, so once you get her on there, it's pretty easy to snap on to the rail, and then you have this uh, kind of geared, uh, spring-loaded knob here that you have to pull out to tighten. Uh, and once you get it fully tightened and release it and it snaps back in, it locks in so it's not going to back off uh, under recoil or under handling or whatever. Uh, the knob is a little bit bulbous and it does hang off the side, uh, but it really hasn't gotten in the way. It's more of an aesthetic thing for me. Uh, I think uh, two... Um, Allen keys probably, or two uh, Allen head screws uh, would have probably been a better option for here. But the ability to do this uh, without tools is kind of nice. So uh, it's a give and a take there. Now, once you get the uh, light actually mounted on to a handguard, uh, of course, you have the option of putting it somewhere where your support side thumb can reach forward and push the tail cap. Uh, so that's a really nice option. And generally, with the way the mount is set up, uh, you can set it up so that you can reach that tail cap uh, with either hand, no matter which side you mount it on. Uh, so if you have to go support side and you switch hands, uh, you can still get that tail cap button. Uh, but what I really like is the included pressure pad. Now, when we mount this thing up on a weapon, we run into some issues. Uh, and I have uh, quite a few rechargeable weapon lights here on various different platforms. Uh, and I always have to remember to take the battery out, uh, put the battery on charge. I try to make sure I do it regularly uh, on my off days so that when I'm starting a new work week, I have fresh batteries and everything. Uh, but the O-lights, since you can charge them without removing the battery, uh, they've got kind of a neat setup here. So the Olight pressure pad uh, does have a magnetic adapter to it. Uh, so once we get this thing mounted up on the uh, rifle or submachine gun or whatever you're gonna mount it on, uh, the cap will snap right on there. Uh, and now you have your pressure pad and your pressure pad operates uh, the standard high functions. You use the low when you uh, snap this on. You can't activate low, uh, but you can do a constant, or I'm sorry, a momentary uh, high by holding the pressure pad down, or you can tap and get a constant on high. Uh, so that is nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about low mode anymore because you're not using low a whole lot when you're using a weapon light. You generally want that Full intensity, uh, both for uh, the psychological effect to it, but also for the identification and being able to just to flood your area with light. Uh, when you're talking about weapon lights, more power is generally better. Uh, so it's nice that you skip right over that low. You don't have to worry about accidentally activating the low. Now, the I don't have it on this one because I'm actually using the mount on another project that we've got right now, uh, but Olight does include a Picatinny mount with the pressure pad. Uh, so once you get this mounted up on the long gun, uh, you can snap this pad on the rail right behind it and then do some cable routing. Uh, and now you've got a nice pressure pad that you can access from either side. Uh, so that is a really nice feature and this uh, grips onto the rail very, very well. I didn't find any extra reason to uh, zip tie or tape or do anything. Uh, it really snaps on there. Now, once you get that set up, when it's time to recharge, it's really easy, uh, depending on how you route your cables, uh, just to pop off uh, the pressure pad uh, mounting point or the pressure pad adapter and then snap on your charger and charge it. So. Uh, one of the things that I think is really interesting is, uh, again, from a law enforcement aspect, uh, if you uh, know your light's getting low, because uh, the Warrior X Pro actually will vibrate 
when it's getting low. Uh, so if you have your weapon light out, you hit that pressure pad and you feel the weapon vibrate, you know your weapons your weapon light is low. When you get back in the car, it's really easy when you lock your gun back in the rack to pop off your pressure pad, pop on your uh, magnetic charger, or even if you just throw it in the passenger seat and do that. Now your weapon light is charging in the car. Now say you get something else happens, you get a felony traffic stop, something, you got to grab that gun out. Um, you grab it, bail out, and forget that you had it plugged in charging. Well, it's just going to pop off. You're obviously going to notice if you hit that pressure pad that your light doesn't work. That's what we would call a clue, and you're either going to come up here and tap the rear of it, or you're going to be in a situation where you're behind cover and you can snap the pressure pad back on and be good to go. Now, the, the magnetic switcheroo does have some drawbacks, uh, and what I did find is that when you're shooting support side and you have the support side for me uh, would be with my right hand on the forend, and I have the light mounted on the right hand side, uh, that I can occasionally come up here and bump the uh, tail cap and cause this uh, magnetic adapter to come ajar. Uh, but the magnets are so strong on it, you can see that even, even if I knock it ajar, it's going to self-center and go back to where it needs to be. Uh, I would have to pop it pretty good to knock it all the way off. Um, and then all I have to do is get it close and it will snap itself back on. So it's kind of a nice design. I still do wish there were uh, raised edges or something on here that would allow this guy to snap in and not slide sideways. So you would have to make a concerted effort to pull backwards. And it also means cable management becomes a greater issue uh, to make sure uh, that you get this guy uh, routed so that you're not going to snag that cable and pull it off. But while uh, it is not as robust as some of the other uh, pressure pad designs on the market, uh, for the price that we're talking about, I think it is a really neat design and it works really well in that uh, middle of the row area. I don't have much complaints with the light output of it. Uh, I don't have much complaints with the durability. Um, as I said, we, we beat the Warrior X up. Uh, pretty good. It's been dropped, banged around, uh, slammed around in the trunk of a car. Um, all that fun junk, and it works well. Uh, the one thing that I still have a complaint on these lights for is, for some reason, they put this uh, glow ring inside uh, the bezel. Now, it doesn't glow for very long, uh, but when you fire this light up on high and then you shut it off, uh, you do have a little bit of a green glow inside the light for a couple of seconds. Now, it's really cool. It's something that my kids would think is absolutely amazing and would love. They would spend hours turning the light on and then looking at the glow ring. Um, but from a tactical aspect, I really don't like it. I want the light on. When I shut the light off, I don't want anything. I don't want anything glowing. Um, it may not give away my position. It may not be that big of a deal. Uh, it really does fade quickly, uh, probably quicker than your eyes can readjust to the darkness now. But it doesn't need to be there. It could just be a regular black silicone ring instead of this glowy uh, silicone ring and uh, still give you the uh, insulation for the bezel uh, and the protection, the shock protection for the bezel without... Uh, all the extra nonsense. Uh, so hopefully they will get rid of that. Now the battery in this is removable. It is a 21700 cell, so it is uh, larger than the previous lights. Um, it is designed to be charged in it. We don't have a charger to charge the uh, battery outside of the light right now, so I can't comment on that. Uh, but the charging time is not horrible uh, with the USB charger. It is a 2 amp charger, so as long as you have a charging block that's able to output 2 amps uh, to the USB, then you'll get full power into the battery. Um, and I generally just put it on to charge overnight and then came back in the morning. There is a charging indicator on the end of the charger. Uh, so it's red when it's charging. It's green when it is fully charged. So uh, inside the car, it's something that's very easy to see. Uh, when I sit it on my desk and plug it in, it's easy for me to come in and look at it and see it's topped off before I pop the charger off and go out the door. 
This is a little bit big for what I would consider an EDC light, everyday carry. Um, this is going to be something that you notice in your pocket. Uh, if you're the kind of guy that wants to put this on your belt, uh, that's fine. Uh, but for uh, putting it in a backpack, hanging it on a war belt, uh, putting it on a duty belt, I think it's just fine. Um, the weight is not horrible on it, especially for the output that you get. Now we're trying to push this video out pretty quickly because Olight is doing a flash sale on this guy on the 8th for 40% off. Uh, and we will drop that link down below. And uh, if there's anything else on the site uh, outside of the flash sale that you want to pick up, uh, you can use code 8541TACTICAL uh, and that'll get you 10% off of uh, regularly priced items. Now I do want to thank uh, Olight for sending this guy out. And if you do use that code down below, uh, it does help support the show, so we greatly appreciate it. Uh, what I do like to see is Olight continues to move forward with their designs. Uh, they solicit input from the community uh, to determine how to make their products better, and I think we're going to see some really cool things on the weapon light side of things going forward. Remember, the Warrior X Pro is not designed to be a weapon light. It just kind of can work that way, and as far as handheld lights work, uh, this one works really, really well, so I can definitely recommend it uh, if you are looking for a light in this price range uh, with these features. So if you guys want to check it out, we'll leave the links down below. If you guys have any questions or comments, then please leave it in the comments section down below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to know how to support the content that you know and love, please check us out over on Patreon. We would love to have you over there. And until next time, get out and shoot.